well, thank you very much, everybody. Nice to have you with, with us tonight. And uh, I'm very grateful to those of you who uh, chose to watch tonight's concert instead of the Super Bowl. I almost forgot that it was happening, but I did the same thing last year, and it seems like there's many other people like me that would prefer to go to a music concert instead of a sports game. So tonight, actually, we're going to be celebrating Valentine's Day. Uh, which is in only two days, I think. So tonight's concert is called My Old Flames. I stole that title from an old Johnny Maddox record, which in turn was borrowed from a song from a Mae West movie. I'll be playing that song for you a little later on. We're going to do uh, Valentine's themed songs. They won't all be super romantic, of course, but uh, I'm going to do quite a few of them. That first tune was called Margie. Now let's do another song about a pretty girl named Marie. And this is a waltz by Irving Berlin. And I'll do it the way they might have done it in the 1920s. First as a waltz and then a foxtrot. Marie. <laughs> folks. Oh, I'm reading here from Bill Huffman, as the editor of the Syncopated Times calls it, the superb owl. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, well, let me do now a little medley of uh, two songs about a girl named Sue. We're going to do Sweet Sue, which is from the late 20s, written in part by a band leader named Victor Young, and then from 1924, I believe, the famous tune, If You Knew Susie Like I Know Susie, which was covered by many artists. I hate to use that term. The, the correct grammar would be it was recorded by many artists or performed by many artists, uh, but especially uh, Eddie Cantor, I think, had a big hit with If You Knew Susie. So we'll start with Sweet Sue and then the other one.
thank you very much. If you knew Susie like I know Susie. Well, let me go ahead and tell you about uh, a special song that I want to play tonight, which I thought would be fun and appropriate since I'm going to be playing a lot of songs uh, written about romance uh, for Valentine's Day. Uh, you know, there's so many songs. There's almost a song for every girl's name that's ever been invented. Uh, we might do a couple of songs for the guys, too. And uh, this is one of the oldest ones that I will play in tonight's concert. It's, it's a ballad that goes all the way back to the 1860s. And this is a special version of the song, which is inspired by a piano roll of the great ragtime pianist John William Boone, otherwise known as Blind Boone. And so the tune is When You and I Were Young, Maggie. Uh, I should dedicate this to my friend Nick Taylor. He's got the most adorable little dog named Maggie. So this is for Maggie, Nick. <laughs> and of course, Blind Boone played largely uh, classical piano music in his concerts, but he did write a few rags and uh, made a handful of hand-played player piano rolls before he died, and this is the most interesting one. He goes through about four or five different variations on the song. First plays it as a slow, pretty ballad, then he puts the melody in the left hand, and it sounds almost like a piece by Franz Liszt, who was his favorite composer, that is uh, Blind Boone. And uh, finally, at the end, he just nearly attacks the piano. So we're going to do, uh, in honor of Maggie, when you and I were young, Maggie.
Thank you so much. When you and I were young, Maggie. And that's, of course, inspired by the great Blind Boon piano roll. It's taken me years to try and get that down, so I decided I'd finally play Maggie for Valentine's Day again. <laughs> yeah, Amy says, well, that ought to make Maggie feel young again. That's the hope. Well, it's been about 15 minutes since I started the concert, so I'll do a quick announcement. If you enjoy the music, I do accept virtual tips for these concerts. Uh, all you have to do is uh, send in a tip on PayPal or Venmo, and it's very helpful uh, for me in my career. You know, even before the pandemic, it's very difficult to book enough concerts to try and make a living doing something like this. And really, the virtual concerts have helped solve that issue to a certain extent. I miss playing in person more often. I don't go on, on the road again until uh, March. At the end of March, I go back to Maine and New Hampshire. And I hope, uh, I hope there's some new listeners every week. I assume there won't be quite as many this week because of the Super Bowl, but we'll see. You know, I have played, my eyes have told me so. That's a beautiful waltz, but um, I'm afraid I better not do it without practicing it or looking at the sheet music. I got a request ahead of time on Facebook before the concert from a lady named Gloria Broadbent, and she asked me to play an old ragtime number, which I love. I think this dates all the way to 1903 or thereabouts. The words were written by Eddie Leonard, a very famous minstrel man of that period. So now we're going to uh, play a tune about Ida. Ida sweet is apple cider.
all right, thank you very much, folks. Ida, sweet as apple cider. That's a great tune. I finally found an original copy of it with Eddie Leonard on the cover from 1903. Oh, boy. Hey, Nick, uh, Tango for Debt, that's a good idea. I did not know one or two of the tunes you asked me about earlier today, but uh, maybe I'll do that later on in the concert. That'd be a great idea. I'll tell you what I want to do now, however, which is I'm going to play... Uh, the title tune for tonight's concert, which is from an old Mae West movie. They made so many uh, pictures during the golden age of Hollywood in the 1930s and 40s, which are all ragtime era uh, tunes, and the, the uh, movies are all set during that period. It was a very happy time, and uh, so the, the Mae West movies are no exception. This movie is called Bell of the 90s, that is the 1890s, of course. And the song is called My Old Flame. Mae West became such a huge star uh, in the 30s, she helped save Paramount Pictures from bankruptcy. And uh, many of the songs for her movies were written by people like Ralph Ranger, in this case, Arthur Johnston and Sam Coslow. They uh, were very, very sophisticated songwriters, believe it or not. The tunes for the Mae West movies are difficult to play. They're very famous and uh, here we have Mild Flame, which she introduced in the movie with Duke Ellington and his orchestra, by the way. Here's Mild Flame from Bell of the 90s, which was, uh, the movie was made in 1934. enough I needed to print out the sheet music. Well, I'm going to do another Mae West song for you. I don't know how romantic that is for Valentine's Day, but I thought it'd be kind of fun. And it took me forever to find the original sheet music to uh, this tune, which is from her first big starring movie called She Done Him Wrong. Words and music by Ralph Ranger, one of the most gifted songwriters of the 30s. And so here's a song for the, for the girls. This is 
a guy what takes his time. She also sang Frankie and Johnny in this movie. Let's see. A guy what takes his time. I'll go for any time. I'm a fast-moving gal who likes them slow. <laughs> I'm happy to take requests as always and let me try and read um, on YouTube here trying to get a couple of the requests I don't know how are things in Glockamora it might as well be spring that would have been a great one uh, except uh, I need the sheet music in front of me to play that I think I'm no angel hey I got another Mae West fan out there at least good night my love that might be kind of kind of good to do uh, I do that with my whole Shirley Temple memory, though. I'm not sure that I need to play the whole thing. Valentine Stump. Why didn't I ever think of that? I, unfortunately, I've never played that. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I'm happy to take the request, but it, it, if you haven't listened to my concerts before, the rule is that it has to be something that I kind of know by heart. Otherwise, I don't really want to perform it unless I have practiced it in its, its perfected performance. Let's do a couple of waltzes while I wait on some more requests here. Hey, a request just came in for the song that I was about to play from Frank. This is a song from the late 1920s called Diane, a beautiful waltz. And then we'll follow that up with one of the very biggest hits of the time, 1927, I believe, called Charmaine. And at the end, we'll do Charmaine as a foxtrot, too, which was a common practice at that time. So here's uh, Diane and then Charmaine.
thank you very much. Well, now let's see. Teddy Bear Blues. I, I'm probably going to skip that tonight. That's not uh, a Valentine's tune at all, but I will certainly be playing uh, My Funny Valentine a little bit later on in the concert. Uh, the next thing on the list that I want to play for you is a couple of songs that were introduced by Fanny Bryce. If you don't know that name, she was a huge star in the Ziegfeld Follies starting in the 1910s and later on became famous as Baby Snooks on the radio. And I believe the movie uh, F Funny Girl with Barbara Streisand, is that it? Funny Girl was all about the life of Fanny Bryce. Now, I'm one of those odd people who's never seen a Barbara Streisand movie in my whole life. I might have to do that. She probably sang both of these songs in the movie, but they go back to the ragtime years, about 1919, 1920. And uh, the first one is called Rose of Washington Square. And after that, we'll do another song about Rose, Secondhand Rose. Both songs introduced by Fanny Bryce. Oh, and incidentally, I love the verse to Rose of Washington Square. It's, it's almost like a tango. See if you like it too. Websites here. I haven't checked Twitch yet tonight. Just a second. Hey, yeah, I've got 96 people on YouTube. 
Only three on Twitch, but I appreciate you guys. <laughs> well, try and get some more requests in for me. Charles, I can't believe you saw Fanny Bryce in person. She died in 1951. That's amazing. Dream Train, that might be a good idea. Uh, that's the kind of song you close a concert with, however. Oh, well, I've got, I've got a few more here that I planned ahead of time. I'll go ahead and do them. This is a song that I've never performed before. And I've always loved it. I decided to sit down and learn it this week. A music by Neil Murray, which was the pen name of Charles N. Daniels, a very prolific songwriter who uh, wrote a lot during the ragtime years and on into the 1920s and 30s. Uh, in fact, Charles N. Daniels helped Scott Joplin get his first ragtime piece published, which was Original Rags in 1899. Uh, lyrics by Gus Kahn. This is Chloe, I Got to Go Where You Are, subtitled Song of the Swamp. Music by Neil Murray, which was one of many pen names that Daniels used. That was the most common uh, name that he used, was Neil Murray. This is one of his later songs, 1927. And in fact, uh, his great niece was a ragtime performer named Nan Bostick that I got to work with a number of times before she died. Here's Chloe.
Thank you very much, everybody. Well, that's Chloe, Song of the Swamp. Oh, Nick, I wish I could play Lorena. I don't know that by heart. I did do that during a concert where I played a bunch of Civil War music. Here's a fun one that I just pulled out right before the concert. This definitely is not Valentine's themed, but uh, <laughs> I thought it'd be appropriate for, for tonight. And hey, it's about beautiful girls. So uh, we're going to do a song which was written in part by Al Sherman, the Sherman Brothers' father, the great Disney songwriters. This came out in 1931, and it's called You Gotta Be a Football Hero to Get Along with the Beautiful Girls. I know every word of the song. You gotta be a football hero to get along with the beautiful girls. You gotta be a touchdown getter, you bet. If you wanna get a baby to pet, the fact that you are rich or handsome won't get you anything in curls. You gotta be a football hero to get along with the beautiful girls. <laughs> and I'm gonna try and play it for you now. In honor of the Super Bowl and Valentine's Day both. Uh, in fact, I'm going to even play the patter chorus if I can turn the pages fast enough. Huh? You've got to be a football hero. romantic thing I'll play tonight. Now, are there any more requests? Let me check Facebook. I haven't checked that website for a bit. Any requests? Go ahead and send them on in. I have some more that I thought I'd play on, on my list in case I don't get any that I really know very well, but uh, that's kind of how this works. Oh, hey, Bonnie. Uh, I want to be loved by you. I don't know that by heart. It's a great old song, just never played it. Everybody loves my baby. Don't know that one either. Oh, Love Letters in the Sand, I could play that. Maybe Love Letters in the Sand would be a good one. Let's do that. Written by J. Fred Coots, the same man that wrote Santa Claus is Coming to Town. I even know the verse. <laughs>
in the sand and I threw in another tune called In the Doorway Where We Used to Kiss Goodnight, written by J. Fred Coots and in part by Glenn Rowell. Rosemary, no I don't know it. That's from Operetta. I really don't know too much like that. But I see a request from Janice for Let Me Call You Sweetheart. That would be a very good one for Valentine's Day. So let's do it. This, uh, this is a waltz that came out in 1910, and the words to the song were written by a woman named Beth Slater Whitson, who was an early Nashville songwriter. I'll play two songs for you that she wrote, uh, Let Me Call You Sweetheart, and then another waltz, Meet Me Tonight in Dreamland. These were huge hits at the time. I was playing in the Diamond Bell once, I don't know, two or three years ago, and a guy sat down by the piano and said that that woman was his great aunt. So I played these songs for, for one of her family members. Let me call you sweetheart.
very much. A couple of pretty waltzes from the early ragtime years. Now, uh, there's another song on the list here that I'd like to play for you, which uh, is more of a ballad from the late 20s. I love this song. I think it's very beautiful. And I suppose it could be either for a man or a woman. It's called If I Had You. And it was written by Ted Shapiro, who was Sophie Tucker's longtime accompanist. He played the piano for her for decades, and this was the biggest hit he ever had as a songwriter. I thought it would be very fitting for tonight's Valentine's concert. If I had you. so very much. Yeah, only three on Twitch. Well, if uh, you're new to my concerts, go over there and subscribe to me on Twitch. I'd really appreciate that. It will help me out eventually. Don't forget to like the stream on all three websites. I think it helps with the social media algorithms. And uh, yeah, let's see. Uh-oh. I see a little bit of, of um, stopping and starting here. On YouTube you know I'll be quite amazed if we get through the whole concert tonight and there's no interruptions considering the internet is probably in high usage right now because of the Super Bowl and uh, TV's digital now too I don't know how all that works I'm I'm too much of a Luddite but uh, <laughs> anyway um, also send in the, those requests I've got some time to do a few more um, and if you're so inclined, I do accept virtual tips on both PayPal and Venmo. And if you don't trust PayPal, there's a P.O. box on my website for checks, too. You can get all my CDs on my website. Uh, I, I recorded a song. I had a request for this tonight called um, Your Eyes Have Told Me So, but I think I'm out of that CD. I recorded that with Johnny Maddox on two pianos. You might still be able to download it on Apple Music or Amazon. Well, that's good. No glitches. I'm, I'm quite amazed. I think around Christmas time that was mostly the weather. At least that's what I'm hoping. Um, I had a request from uh, Daryl and Norma Woodruff out in California before tonight's concert to play a song that uh, I didn't have much time to practice it, but it's simple enough I'm going to play it for you. And it's a really gorgeous love song. Here's the original copy of it from the movie High Society, Words and Music by Cole Porter. This is true love. 
a really terrific movie. Bing Crosby, Grace Kelly, Frank Sinatra, and Louis Armstrong as well, of course. This is certainly one of the more simple songs that Cole Porter ever wrote. It's kind of nice to know that he was capable of writing a simple song, and it was an enormous hit. Uh, believe it or not, Patsy Klein recorded this, and this is uh, one of uh, her recordings that I absolutely love. True Love. There's True Love by Cole Porter. That's for Daryl and Norma. Well, I see some other requests here that I might be able to get to. Let me check YouTube real quick. I don't know you go to my head. Um, let's see. Singing in the Rain. Well, that's not really a love song. Oh, let me check on Facebook. Well, here's one that I might be able to do. Oh, hello, Marie. This is my friend in Durango. <laughs> I see a request from Bonnie Minton for Moon River. Let me try and play that for you. This came on Facebook from Bonnie. That's something that I can do. <laughs> I know it by heart. In fact, I'll play you two pretty waltzes by uh, Henry Mancini. Great movie songwriter, a little bit past the period of music that I normally do, but I like these. We're going to do Moon River, which uh, was written for the movie Breakfast at Tiffany's, believe it or not, and then follow that up with a song called The Sweetheart Tree from the Great Race, both by Henry Mancini. Some more love songs for Valentine's Day. Thank you. 
you very much. Yeah, isn't that song wonderful, Bonnie? That's the sweetheart tree from a movie called The Great Race. It's a very famous movie. I haven't seen it. I, I need to watch that. A friend of mine here in Durango asked me to learn that song, The Sweetheart Tree. And those are the type of tunes that I play when I'm at the hotel here. Uh, they're slightly newer, so, you know, people recognize them more easily. And uh, I should have played those when I did the Rag and the Hits concert. I don't know why I didn't think about that. What if the Super Bowl's over yet? Does anybody know? I see Akimi just joined us. Now. Well, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to play a couple of songs for you that were not on my original list, but I just realized that these are two of the most romantic songs in the Great American Songbook. So I think it'd be appropriate to play them for you now. I don't know why, but I just started playing both of them as a little medley. Uh, they were both written by Jerome Kern, uh, one of the great geniuses of the American Songbook. From 1933, the musical Roberta. We're going to do Smoke Gets in Your Eyes. And then from 1939, uh, originally written for a Broadway show called Very Warm for May, and it's a song called All the Things You Are, two of the gorgeous and romantic songs of the American Songbook. Let's see what I can do with them. My arrangements of these songs were uh, partially inspired by uh, the late John Arpin, a pianist from Toronto that I think had the magic touch, just one of the best that ever lived. So here's two Jerome Kern songs. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you very much. All the things you are and smoke gets in your eyes. Aren't those beautiful songs? Well, let me check all the websites one more time here before I uh, do my last little medley here. Oh, I'm glad you reminded me of that, Amy. Um, let me go ahead and play Tango for Debt. I'll break up the, the program here a little bit with a more contemporary uh, ragtime style piece. Um, I think I'm going to skip Dream Train tonight. Sorry, Leo. I, I mentioned Tango for Debt earlier. This is a beautiful tango written by Johnny Maddox, and he named this for his partner, for Debt Eagle. They were together about 35 years, and she loves Latin music. And they used to spend the winters together in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So this uh, is a tune that he wrote when they were down in Florida, and I have always loved it. It is quite beautiful and romantic. So here's Tango for Dead, since I got a couple of requests for that. Here we go. <laughs>
thank you very much. That's Tango for Dead. I'm so glad you thought of that, uh, Amy. I haven't played it in quite a while since uh, I haven't seen for Dead in quite some time. Uh, it's just not a, a tune that has come up lately. And that is on one of my CDs. I did a CD called Revival Ragtime. That is all more contemporary ragtime music. Only the last section of that piece is really written in ragtime. That is syncopated rhythm. Johnny pointed that out to me once. Well, now it's time to go ahead and do uh, the grand finale for tonight's concert, which is going to be a whole medley of songs by Rogers and Hart, Richard Rogers and Lawrence Hart, who were two of the great songwriters of the American Songbook in the 1920s and 30s. And the reason that this idea came to me is, of course, because they wrote the song My Funny Valentine. That was written for a Broadway show called Babes in Arms in 1937, I believe. Shortly afterwards, uh, Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland also made a movie called Babes in Arms. But it was originally a Broadway show. I'm not, I'm not going to start with that one. That song is going to be in the middle of the medley. I'm going to start with Manhattan, which was one of their first big hits. And then we'll do Blue Room, and, and then is My Funny Valentine. And after that, there's two more songs in the medley. We'll do You Took Advantage of Me, and then we'll end with a uh, beautiful romantic song they wrote for a movie called um, Love Me Tonight with Maurice Chevalier and Jeanette McDonald, and it's a song called Lover. They only sang about one chorus of Lover in the movie Love Me Tonight, but it is a song that has gone on to become a standard and has been recorded by many, many people since then. And this is sort of a prearranged fantasy, almost, of the music of Rodgers and Hart, including My Funny Valentine. Once again, uh, this is partly inspired by John Arpin, who had the brilliant idea to combine My Funny Valentine with part of Chopin's revolutionary etude. So we'll see if I can do it. Here is my Rodgers and Hart medley.
much. Well, thank you so much for listening tonight, everybody. I'm going to close the concert here a few minutes early. I'm getting over a very mild cold, if you can't tell. But I will be back next week with another concert. I appreciate all of you listening. I appreciate your tips, your patronage. It's very helpful to us poor, lowly musicians, especially during football season. I'm not 100% sure what next week's concert will be. I'm thinking I might do a tribute to Bing Crosby. I did that once early on during the pandemic, but I haven't done it uh, lately. So that might be a fun thing to do next week. So stay tuned, and thanks so much for listening tonight. I'll see you on all three websites next week, uh, 6 o'clock Mountain Time for another concert Sunday night. Good night for now.